are constantly monitoring regulations. They are flagging uh, when certain regulations are changing and if those changes might have an impact on the business of our customers. And we keep our customers informed about that through different tools and mechanisms. So we have a tool called 3E Monitoring where our customer get access to all these regulatory changes which might come up in the future and also describing how this impacts our customers' business. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is the Digital Supply Chain Podcast, the number one podcast focusing on the digitization of supply chain. And I'm your host, Global Vice President at SAP, Tom Raftery. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Supply Chain Podcast. My name is Tom Raftery with SAP. And with me on the show today, I have Oliver. Oliver, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Thank you. I'm Oliver Denkert. I'm uh, with Veris3 and I'm responsible for our global strategy. And I'm also responsible for managing our strategic partnership with SAP. I'm with Veris since a couple of uh, months. Um, We started the journey back in um, April uh, last year uh, when our partnership with Veris has been uh, initiated, the partnership between Veris and SAP. And um, yeah. That's uh, where I'm. I worked with um, SAP previously for 10 years. And back before starting my career with SAP, I have been uh, with Technidata. Okay, fantastic. And uh, for people who are unaware, what do Verisk 3E do? Verisk 3E, we are um, um, working in the um, sustainability business, um, so to speak. So what are we doing? We are um, helping our customers uh, to be um, um, efficient and, and productive in uh, complying with uh, regulatory requirements in the area of product safety, hazardous communication, uh, workplace safety. So this is, these are our core domain areas. And uh, specifically, our focus is on data management, uh, analytical camp- uh, capabilities. So Veris3 belongs to Veris, our mother company, which is an analytical company. Uh, why we use data uh, to derive uh, predictive analytics. Um, So we like to help our customers to drive uh, and uh, compliance statuses based on data they have in-house with additional information and data which we provide based on regulatory background. So in other words, what we are doing in many cases, we are looking to regulations. Um, So this is in many cases just paperwork or digitalized paperwork. And we look into this in terms of, okay, how can we extract certain data elements and make it machine readable? How can we drive specific algorithms um, so that we are able, based on chemical compositions, for instance, to generate certain compliance statuses um, based on the regulations, but uh, in a way that it can be done through um, well, intelligent solutions, machine learning, algorithms. Uh, so that means that companies can do the regulatory status calculation uh, pretty much um, automatically. Okay, okay. And we should mention as well that one of the reasons we're having this discussion is because you guys are going to the EHS event, which is happening uh, at the start of October. The I think it's the 6th to the 9th of October, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Exactly. And um, this um, SAP event is obviously um, very important for us because um, we we work together with SAP in a strategic uh, partnership. So we have a strategic development cooperation agreement with SAP because uh, SAP is a market leader in uh, product compliance and uh, workplace safety solutions, uh, highly integrated um, into um, the customer's um, value chain. So the key advantage with SAP to um, interact and to do these type of compliance um, checks, for instance, based on certain events, if you want to purchase a product or if you want to sell a product, if you want to manufacture a product. So SAP uh, strengths in all these um, business process support is being leveraged with um, S4HANA for product compliance. And as we are the strategic development partner with SAP and for SAP for that product, Obviously, this event is um, very important for us to share uh, some innovations with our customers jointly together with SAP 
but also explain um, how we as a company, Veris3, is developing over time and where do we see the future of uh, product compliance. Okay. For, for people listening who might be unaware, what kind of company would be a typical customer for Veris3? Or Veris3? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, typically, obviously, all chemical manufacturers are... Um, potential customers of Veris3 because we are specifically looking into the management of uh, chemical regulations and the chemical industry has been regulated already since many, many years. And this is where um, our domain knowledge also comes from. So we have people um, who worked in industries who um, are chemists who exactly know the business of a chemical manufacturer and we help those companies to comply with all the different regulations. But it's not only a chemical manufacturer, because uh, think about that there are many companies um, out there in the market um, who do not manufacture chemical products, but who are selling chemical products um, under their own brand, for instance. Yeah? And in this case, if you're selling a chemical product under your own brand, you're kind of obliged to fulfill the same um, requirements in many cases as a chemical manufacturer. So you also need to provide a safety data sheet, a document which is kind of um, describing um, uh, um, characteristics of the product, uh, how it's been regulated. Um, you also need to make sure that when you transport um, a um, chemical uh, product from A to B, that you comply with specific transportation regulations. And this is how we support our customers. So it's a kind of broad range. As I said, it's chemical manufacturers, retailer of chemical products, pharmaceutical industry, um, also the area of uh, consumer products, um, uh, food, um, these are um, customers who kind of uh, look into the yeah, product range of what Veris3 is offering and uh, where we um, support those customers to, yeah, to be more efficient in what they do today. Okay. And it's got to be challenging for those manufacturers because the regulations change from I won't say day to day, but, you know, from year to year, certainly. And also not just uh, over time, but also they, they change from region to region. And uh, it, 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 that has to be challenging for various 3E as well, because you've got to, you've got to keep an eye on all the different regulations and, and modify your code base based on that, no? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, that's a challenge for our customers. And yeah, it's uh, regulations are changing um, uh, quite often. So it's not a one-off. Um, and that's a big challenge uh, where we support our customers. So we have um, experts around the globe. So people in every global region, uh, we have also so-called national experts so that we have ex access to the specific um, regulatory requirement in each country of the world. And this is our basis. So this um, expert network, how we call it, they are constantly monitoring regulations um, they are flagging uh, when certain regulations are changing and um, if those changes might have an impact on the business of our customers. And we keep our customers informed about that through different tools and mechanisms. So we have um, a tool called uh, 3E Monitoring where our customer get access to all these regulatory changes which might come up in the future and also describing how this impacts our customer's business. In the context of SAP, um, obviously we are supporting SAP with all this regulatory background and knowledge and content. And uh, we deploy updates on a quarterly basis so that it can be delivered um, with a software as far as for product compliance, or if you are on a previous release, um, uh, you uh, can receive our product three ERC, uh, which covers all the regulatory updates and changes and um, uh, will be issued, um, as I said, every quarter to our customers so that uh, they are kept compliant through these tools. Oliver, are there any customer examples you can talk to to kind of more, make this more concrete in people's minds? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're, and, uh, and when you ask me about the question, who are our customers, I talked about uh, specifically the retailer business. And it's a very complex business because, um, they have a broad variety of different products 
And um, those customers are also, as many uh, others as well, in the middle of the supply chain. So when you want to deal with regulations, the first key thing is uh, which you need to address to um, understand um, what type of information and what regulatory information has to be delivered through the supply chain. So if you look into a chemical product, which is in many cases a, a composition of many individual chemical components, um, as a retailer, you also need to exactly know uh, what's in the product, which you have probably purchased by a supplier. So what you need to do is go to the supplier and ask for what is the what are the chemical ingredients of that product? Um, what is about uh, the marketability status of the ingredients as well as the product itself? So the whole supply chain management is one key challenge uh, which we are addressing through different tools. So we offer our customers with 3 Connect a platform which helps our customers co to collect all this data out of the supply chain. But we are also complementing um, this with um, services where we help to educate even the supplier about certain regulatory requirements that they might not be aware of. So the key thing first is specifically in this area to collect um, all that data. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, as a retailer, we do this in a, in a broad range. It's about thousands of, of data sets which we acquire through the supply chain of our customer. So once all the data is um, available, um, we can use this uh, specifically to help our customers to do certain marketability checks, um, to generate uh, the so-called safety data sheets for more than 100 countries um, uh, in the world in more than 50 different languages. Um, and uh, then um, if our customers, uh, and for specifically for those customers who are using SAP, we can then deliver this information back into their SAP environment. So that means if um, they sell a product uh, to a specific market, that's a safety data sheet, the compliance document can be automatically picked and be um, allocated, so to speak, to the to the uh, sales node in the SAP system. So once there is a sales order, then the system automatically picks those type of documents for that country and send it back um, uh, to their customers. So here we have the advantages of working as various three as a kind of extended uh, product safety and compliance department using our platform capabilities with a high degree of automation to create those documents. As I said, to analyze the supply chain, to make sure that our customer is compliant with the global regulations, but then also deliver the data back into our customer's environment, uh, IT environment, into the SAP environment, so that uh, they can make use of all the integration advantages um, they have with the SAP software, which is another um, uh, major uh, value proposition we have for our customers, that we are tied into our customers' the workflows. That's one example of a retailer, uh, very complex. In other cases, um, when a customer is using SAP EHS or S4HANA for product compliance, uh, we complement um, their product portfolio specifically with data and algorithms so that uh, they can be much more efficient and effective in creating compliance documentation, uh, which is required to sell the products, to manufacture the products, etc. Okay, superb. And we're seeing a shift these days to uh, cloud computing very much. Is that something that Verisk are looking at as well? Yeah, cloud computing, um, cloud um, solutions is part of our core strategy. So um, we are deploying all our capabilities in different ways, uh, but cloud is one of uh, our core uh, deployment platforms. So when we look into um, uh, new solution capabilities, um, uh, we have a kind of cloud principle uh, first, but we also acknowledge that companies uh, still um, require certain capabilities on premise. And um, here we are kind of uh, working in a hybrid approach um, at the moment. But our cloud uh, strategy, specifically in the context of SAP, obviously is also very much supported through S4HANA for product compliance cloud, um, where uh, we work together with SAP, deliver the content into S4HANA for product compliance 
cloud um, solution uh, so that uh, the data is already embedded in the solution and we extend that uh, through cloud services. So one idea, for instance, is that in the past, um, customer had to kind of um, install the majority of the software uh, on premise while um, uh, there are a lot of advantages to use these type of services which have been on premise uh, through a cloud environment because then you don't need to do any local installation. You connect your system uh, through a service um, call, through a web service call with the service we host and you can uh, much faster adapt uh, to changed regulations because this is one challenge our customers have. How do I get all the content updates, those frequent content updates, um, which are delivered every quarter into my system and how do I apply this? And here, obviously, our focus is to make this much easier, uh, to have an easy consumption and cloud helps to do this. Um, there's a good business reason to do it. Yep. And this is how we work together with our customers and obviously with SAP. Superb, superb. At the very outset, you uh, mentioned sustainability as as a you know kind of a raison d'etre can you talk a little bit more about that because lots of people have different definitions of sustainability and what their sustainability solutions are mm. how do you help customers be more sustainable yeah and, and 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 that ties into our company's purpose so there's there's more just doing business right and and um, our purpose as various 3e is to create a safer world, um, to help our customers with um, intelligent compliance solutions, uh, with sustainable progress and how we develop our solutions to contribute to this uh, purpose as well. So it's not meant to be only our purpose, but how can we help our customers as well to create a safer world? And to make this a little even broader, this, this, this for instance, nicely ties into uh, the UN um, uh, Sustainability Development Goals, which is a kind of framework um, um, supporting and looking to different dimensions. These are environmental dimensions. How can we protect and improve um, environmental or reduce environmental impact of, of products which are being um, uh, manufactured or delivered to the market? This has social impact and economical impact. And this is an area and and uh, where uh, we look into this and see, hey, how can we directly help our customers through being more efficient to have more information about regulations? Uh, because at the end of the day, specifically in the chemical business, the chemical regulations are being uh, built and, and delivered uh, to protect the environment, to protect people, to protect the impact of, of hazardous substances to the environment um, specifically. And uh, we try to translate and connect of what we are doing towards those sustainability development um, goals um, in those different categories, environment, economy, and society. And um, this is um, kind of why we stand up in the morning early and, and why we are kind of, of busy in, in, in helping our customers. Um, this is not only to do a great business, uh, but also to contribute uh, to a higher purpose. And um, as I said, UN um, sustainability, sustainability Development Goals is one framework. There are others, uh, there are regulations, there are other initiatives uh, which we look at. Um, at the end of the day, we, we aim to to um, support our customers um, specifically to be better in that area as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Oliver, we are at around the 20 minute mark now in the podcast, and this is when I usually start to wind it down. Is there any question I've not asked you that you wish I had any topic that we've not discussed that you think it's important for people to be aware of? We talked about um, the, the the partnership with SAP, and um, I would like to just mention here because we are we are also preparing for for um, the EHS um, event in October uh, that we are all uh, looking very much forward um, uh, for that event uh, because um, with SAP meeting um, all the customers um, on site receiving 
which is not on site, which is virtual <laughs> this year, but um, uh, receiving feedback, uh, sharing uh, new thoughts and ideas about how we uh, continue uh, to uh, deliver uh, on our strategic partnership with SAP. I think this is um, important to know. We are excited to be part of that community. Uh, we are always uh, looking forward to receive feedback uh, from customers. So if there's anything you would like to tell us about um, your business, about what you expect from Rares 3 specifically, we are uh, looking very much forward to receiving your feedback on that. And obviously, we're also looking very much forward about meeting you virtually in October or at any other event which might take place in the next couple of months. Superb. Uh, Oliver, if people want to know more about Oliver, about Verisk 3E, I won't say about the EHS event because we'll have links to that in the show notes anyway, but about yourself or about Verisk 3E, are there any links that you'd like me to mention in the podcast or anything you'd like me to put in the show notes to direct people where to go? The easiest way is to connect, I mean, through through the web is with uh, www.verus3e.com. So this is our um, uh, homepage. Uh, you can uh, learn more about the event itself, but learn more about Verus 3E. You will also find um, uh, the direct contact. So if you'd like to get back to me on any topic we have discussed, uh, don't hesitate to drop me an email, odunkert at verus3e.com. So looking forward to this as well. Or on the web page, you also find um, references to the executive board, to other people out of Verus 3E. Don't hesitate to reach out um, uh, to us or subscribe for any news. We are continuously um, delivering uh, through our network. Uh, we would be very happy to stay in contact with you. Super, super. Oliver, that's been fantastic. That's been really great. Thanks a million for coming on the show today. Thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure. Okay, we've come to the end of the show. Thanks everyone for listening. If you'd like to know more about digital supply chains, head on over to sap.com slash digital supply chain or, or simply drop me an email to tom.raftery at sap.com. If you like the show, please don't forget to subscribe to it in your podcast application of choice to get new episodes as soon as they're published. Also, Please don't forget to rate and review the podcast. It really does help new people to find the show. Thanks. Catch you all next time.